Today, the UN pulls out of Mali, the Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny goes missing, and the US Supreme Court is asked to come to a conclusion on Trump's presidential immunity. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Tuesday the 12th of December 2023. It's a wrap for the United Nations mission in Mali. UN personnel are officially packing up after a decade-long stint on Monday and are leaving with the instability far from resolved, sparking some fears the country could become even more unstable than it has been in the past decade. The mission, known as the UN Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission in Mali, ended in June and was ordered by Mali's military government to pull out UN personnel and gave the mission until December the 31st to pack their bags. As of Friday, more than 10,500 personnel had left Mali. That's out of the initial 13,800 staff. The pullout went pretty smoothly, unlike recent withdrawals in Mali's unstable north, which took place under fears of a military escalation between the army and rebel groups. The mission itself was launched in 2013 mainly to support the implementation of a major peace agreement with northern separatists, to essentially stop an uprising and to stabilise the country. Its wider brief was to protect civilians and keep the jihadist threat in check. Its mission was never to fight the militants. Still, the mission has been described as the deadliest peacekeeping mission in the world, with over 300 peacekeepers killed by fighters associated with Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State organisation. Things got a bit tense for the UN mission when Mali's military government took over in August 2020. The junta made headlines when it ditched its old colonial alliance with France and turned militarily and politically to the east towards Putin. And so the mission has been criticised by some Malians for not being able to stem the crisis, as despite the presence of UN peacekeepers, terror attacks still steadily increased and more and more Malians were joining insurgent groups. Mali's foreign minister proclaimed the mission as a failure, saying it was part of the problem, not the solution. Now, there are concerns that with the UN out of the picture, fighting will intensify between Malayan forces and armed groups for territorial control. A liquidation phase will take place after January the 1st, which essentially involves handing over leftover gear to the authorities. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Moving to Russia now, where it was reported on Monday that opposition leader and Putin critic Alexei Navalny has not been heard from in almost a week, with his lawyers unable to contact him. Navalny had previously been convicted, among other things, of extremism, although it's widely understood that these charges are politically motivated. It was only back in August that Navalny was handed another 19-year prison sentence on further extremism charges, including a count of the rehabilitation of Nazism. This brought his cumulative jail sentence up to three decades. It's believed that Navalny will not be let out of prison for as long as Putin remains alive. This ruling was additionally significant, as it meant that Navalny was also sentenced to a special prison regime which would limit his ability to meet visitors or receive or write letters. Despite living in these conditions for months now, Navalny's lawyers have been able to keep in touch. On Monday though, they stated it was the sixth day that they hadn't seen Navalny. Additionally, he failed to appear via video conference to a court hearing, with prison officials claiming that there had been a power outage. What adds to this concern is the fact that Navalny's lawyers have also claimed that he's no longer listed as a prisoner at the IK-7 prison, and the fact that his disappearance came only days after Putin announced that he would stand a fifth term in power as president. Some believe that this move could be an attempt by Putin to silence Navalny even further in the run-up to the election. Moving to the US now, where the Supreme Court has been instructed to come to a decision on whether or not Donald Trump can be prosecuted for crimes that he committed while president. As part of this decision, the court has asked Trump's legal team to file a response to them by the 20th of December. This all comes from an ongoing legal case in which former President Trump is set to stand trial for charges relating to an alleged plot to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. 
His lawyers have claimed that, as a former president, he cannot face criminal charges for any conduct related to his official responsibilities. A lower court has already rejected this case, and it's now for the Supreme Court to decide. Now, at the heart of this legal drama is the issue of speed. Jack Smith, the special counsel that's overseeing two criminal investigations into Trump, has leapfrogged other lower courts and has gone straight to the Supreme Court. About this, Trump's lawyers have said that there is absolutely no reason to rush this sham to trial except to injure President Trump and tens of millions of his supporters. Ultimately, it seems that Smith wants this issue resolved sooner rather than later, whereas the Trump team is keen to delay. If the decision is delayed, then Trump's trial is delayed, potentially past the presidential election next year. If this happens, then there would be a debate about presidential immunity. We'll update you on what happens as this story develops. Moving to the COP28 summit now, where a draft agreement was published. As part of this agreement, a range of actions that countries could take in order to reduce their emissions is listed. The key thing here, though, is the use of the word could. The draft agreement does not refer to a specific plan to phase out fossil fuels, something demanded by a number of countries and the EU. This has caused a huge amount of backlash, despite not being something that some reporters actually picked up on when they first received the first draft of the text. The BBC's Justin Rowlatt explained that when he first read the text, his hot take was that it was really progressive. He said that he then read the rest of the text and noticed the crucial word could, and explained that what he was reading was a menu and that the text was actually very weak. This is an observation that has already been made by a number of other organisations. The WWF, for example, said that this disastrous new draft is way less ambiguous than the last version. This is disappointing. The Alliance of Small Island States went even further, explaining that we will not sign our death certificate and that we cannot sign onto text that does not have strong commitments on phasing out fossil fuels. Larger states like the US have also signalled their fury at the text, with the US's State Department saying that the language on fossil fuels needs to be substantially strengthened. The EU has also threatened to walk away if the draft agreement doesn't change. Right now, it's not known whether the draft text will change, but if not, it seems that the COP28 agreement may well fall down. In the final story today, we discuss Germany's plan to close their coal-fired power plants. On Monday, the European Commission ruled that Germany should be allowed to pay energy giant RWE 2.6 billion euros in state aid to close coal power stations. In essence, EU law exists which prohibits state aid unless there were reasons related to general economic development which justify it. The EU Commission has ruled that this justification does exist and that the money should help the industry phase out coal. In German law, no electricity is to be produced from coal from 2038 onwards. That's all for today, but if you want more from us, then you should pick up a copy of our newspaper, Too Long. And if you've been considering it for a while, then this week only, the code TLDR Daily will get you 30% off. So it's the ideal time to buy. If you don't know, Too Long is our one-off newspaper, which summarises everything that happened in 2023, as well as looking forward to 2024. It's full of exclusive analysis and explainers from the TLDR team, as well as a whole bunch of our favourite creators. We also put a ton of effort into the design, putting together a load of high-quality graphics and designs. As I say, if you want a copy, you can head over to our website and secure 30% off the normal price by using the code TLDRDAILY.